How am I gonna shop sex? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Whiskey and Wool. My name is Shannon and I am coming to you from northern New Jersey in the US where I live and I work and I craft. Um, I have a bunch of finished objects. Oh my goodness. So it's actually been a f almost a full month. I think it has been a full month since I last pod or since I last filmed an episode, a regular episode, because in between I had Vogue Knitting Live and I also had a finished object um, video where I talked about my uh, new design Saucy Surrey bomber jacket. So I'm counting that in my um, finished objects for this episode, though I will not be talking about it. Um, oh my goodness, kitty. Kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> uh, so, but I'm not, I'm actually not going to spend time talking about it this episode because it does have its own episode and um, all of that jazz, but if you are interested in knowing more about it, please watch the FO um, video. And I also have video tutorials about the uh, some of the techniques that are unique to this, including setting the zipper. They're not wonderful, they're adequate <laughs> videos. Um, I am intending to re-record some um, parts of them because I am, I'm actually, I'll get to it when I get to my whips. Um, I'm working on a second one. So, and it's paler, it's like a, the colors are more subdued than that very keyed up bright one. Um, but anyway, I want to, before I talk about finished objects, I kind of jumped right in there without really thinking through, without sticking to my plan, I guess I should say, because I did have a plan. I just didn't stick with it. My plan is actually to insert a video here um, where I'm talking about whiskey. And if you're not interested in the whiskey chat, I will have the skip to on there. Because again, once again, I am, I am recording kind of early in the morning. I'm still on my orange juice right here. Uh, I have a little grapefruit juice dirt in there if it looks a little off color. Um, so yeah, still working on that this morning. I always put ice in my orange juice because I like the... Um, I, it feels more refreshing to me when it's watered down a bit with the, you know, naturally with the ice. So that's just my way of drinking fruit juice. Um, but yeah, anyway, whiskey chat coming in here and I will be back with you to talk more about knitting and stuff after the chat. Hi, I'm back to just do a little or maybe I'm front. <laughs> I'm up here. Uh, it's later in the day now and I am, I poured myself a wee dram of some whiskey. This lovely amber toned whiskey is Highland Park 18 year Vikings, Viking Pride. I... Anyway, okay. Uh, yeah, 18 year Viking Pride Highland Park, $150 bottle, US dollars. Um, I'm happy I got a wee dram in my advent calendar. So I want to just tell you, so just, I didn't, haven't really talked to you about how I, what I do in order to prepare doing a little whiskey chat. What I do is I look at the distillery's website, read about them, and then tell you some anecdotal stories or whatever the website is reporting. And uh, after that, I give you the tasting notes I taste, and then I tell you what the experts say. So, uh, Highland Park is located on, I believe I'm pronouncing this correctly, Orkney Island, or Island, in the northernmost, it's the northernmost distillery in Scotland. So it's on the on this fairly substantial island that is, you know, you go all the way as far as you can on the landmass that is uh, Scotland and England, and as far north as you can go, and then there's an island right off of that called Orkney. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I might not be. Who knows? I'm sure to a Scottish ear or an English ear, UK ear, it probably sounds weird. Uh, it sounds weird to me because I want to call it Orkney. 
Nevertheless, <laughs> this is the northernmost distillery. Supposedly, it was established in the 17, late 1798 is its um, official establishment date by a Viking. So a lot of the, um, a lot of the iconography on the bottles and in the, on the website are all about Viking, like the bottle. I don't know if you can see, I'll try to blow it up. <coughs> this is their 12 year, which is a much more reasonable 50 or $60 bottle. But you see the artwork that's on the packaging. It's also on the bottle. Um, sorry, I'm getting a text message. Um, imagery and stuff that they have too is on the, on the website is like rugged, manly imagery, which I guess works for some people, um, and maybe not for others. They don't have a lot of information about their whiskey. Like some websites will speak a lot about their whiskey. What they do share is that their whiskeys are all aged in sherry ca uh, casks. So... Um, some, what you'll find with some whiskeys is that there's a double dist distillation process or a double aging process is the better word, not distillation. Um, there's a double aging process where they might age in one type of cask like sherry and then do a finishing in, I don't know, a burgundy cask or something like that. So, um, in this case, it sounds like the whiskey stays in the same type of cask so it's either american or european oak casks that have been used to make sherry um, it doesn't specify what type of sherry or anything like that because sometimes the sherry types will different flavors of sherry will impart different flavors into the whiskey um okay so uh i did the pour i added my couple drops of water i've done a lot of smelling of it um it's been sitting in the glass for about 15 minutes which lets it sort of the kind of the alcohol vapor that sits on top has been allowed to um dissipate so you can really get a good smell um it's a really beautiful amber color i love this color I don't really smell smoke. It smells like toffee, really, more than anything. I smell a little bit of a fruity smell, like a red fruit smell, like maybe berries or... Oh, it smells chocolatey too. You definitely get kind of a chocolatey smell in the end. Mm, wow. Oh my goodness. That's really nice. I think with the older whiskeys, because this is an 18 year, I think what happens is that you get more, it just starts to get more of those woody flavors. Like it definitely has a more woody flavor at the end. And there's a little hint of smoke. Highland Park Distillery is uh, located near, from what I understand, like on that island, there's a moor where they pull the peat from. So that would be the smoky flavors. I'm going to do a quick look at, I definitely taste that. This is really smooth whiskey, by the way, very smooth. I'm going to look at what experts say about the taste so I can give you like a full, more full um, uh rundown on what the um what the scotch should taste like so sorry distracted by my stuff here i saw the i'm not finding the website that i actually i really like let me put this in okay here we go this is the one i like um okay so this is what this is what the tasting profile looks like. I think you can see that well. Antique bronze color. The nose is complex, filled with florals and, oh, I'm gonna read it because it's so freaking blurry. Um, cherry juice, warm toffee, almond cookies, and peat smoke. So that's what you get when you smell it. On the tongue, you get a creamy texture, stir, deep stew, stewed, stewed stewed fruit 
espresso, hmm. citrus zest, toffee, and a spice blend. The finish is nice and long with sweetness, so that when I'm saying smooth, they're saying nice and long, with herbs and a touch of peat. I'm not sure I get the espresso. I'm a big espresso fan. Maybe slightly in the background. Definitely the toffee, the spice blend, the fruit up front, uh, and definitely the finish. This is a really nice drinkable scotch. Um, I It would probably be a splurge, I'm guessing, at $150 or so for a bottle. It's a beautiful bottle, though. Very beautiful bottle. Um, yeah, that is the Highland Park Viking Pride 18-year. I hope you enjoyed this whiskey chat. Okay, you're back. Um, so let me talk to you about finished objects. And also after I show you the next finished object, I'll be dressing Martha in it. So you will suddenly see Martha go from um, undressed to dressed. Uh, I'll be doing that soon. But anyway, I was super productive this last couple weeks, even post Vogue, um, because I had a few objects that were very, few knitted things that were very, very close to being finished. Uh, so I powered through and, um, well, I shouldn't say few, I had two, two things that were very close to being finished. So let me talk about this one first. So I think this one is going to be pretty quick. This is an As If Tea by Shay Johnson. Um, it is, uh, let's see, what can I tell you about it? It is knit out of my hand spun yarn, which um, I think I showed my hand spun in my last regular episode. And then uh, you have a, a mohair um, up here. I will insert a picture of me wearing this. I have pictures of me wearing this here for you to see and uh, I'm, I may also put in the pattern, the image from the pattern. I really, I mean this is a very fast knit. I actually spun the yarn knowing this is what I was going to make. I'm just looking for what I have left. Yeah, here it is. This is the, the yarn I have left. It was spun out of a bat called Yule from Stitch Together Studio. Um, it was a I guess inspired by Vintage Christmas. She had put up a, a concept board before I ordered the second bat. So I had two bats. It was basically eight ounces of of um, fiber. And yeah, I spun it knowing that I was making this. So I spun it to a worsted weight. I made, this is actually the very first three ply I've ever made. I tend to do two ply mostly when I'm hand spinning. Um, but this was a three ply. I know now that my nap, without thinking, I can spin to fingering weight. I don't have to think about it, it just happens. So I knew that would be what would happen with this. And this also, I think this has a um, significant silk content. And usually silk, because silk is such a long filament, such a long fiber, you can really get thin with your spinning with silk. So if you're if you're a spinner and you're struggling with getting creating thin yarn, try to work with a silk blend because a silk blend will help you get thinner just because of the very very long filaments like wool staples, you know, are average about that long, but silk silk if they take it from a cocoon, it goes for the entire length that it took the worm to make the cocoon. So it's quite long. Can they can be quite long the staples of silk. Um why was I telling you all that? Oh, because I knew I was going to spin thin, so I figured I would try a three-ply. So I made six bobbins and then made two skeins out of those six bobbins. And this is how much I have left. I th think that the uh, Ravelry um, stash page is estimating I have about 100 yards. So I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I don't have a plan. I have, you know, I have a whole drawer full. <laughs> you're not, you're seeing just the top of the drawer right here. Um, I have a whole drawer full of scraps. I'm starting to get, uh, you know, a handful of hand spun scraps, which maybe, I don't know, they'll go into some, I probably need to get on that scrap blanket wagon <laughs> someday and um, make some stuff out of that. So, yeah, but I am so happy with it. So happy with the way it came out. It is, you know, like my second, my first as if tea. This is my second one. I did, um, I understand, so I met Shay 
at Rhinebeck this past October, and she, um, she came up to me. I didn't realize that I had influenced, like the modifications I made had influenced her to rewrite the pattern. So I think she was writing the pattern to make bigger sizes, but then she also really loved, she had told me online that she really loved the mods that I made. And then I, I found out from another person who, who knows her that the changes, the mods I had made had um, helped her modify the pattern because the way that I knit this pattern now, based, this is based on my mods, apparently is written into the pattern. So, or at least it's written in as an option. So, um, because the original pattern had you holding the mohair and, with along with the wool instead of doing intarsia, and I did intarsia, I did like an intarsia um, stitch there. So you can see here on the back where I didn't, I just ended, I had, it's a pain in the butt, but it's only like 26 rows or so, or 20 something rows, depending on your size. It's a real pain in the butt to hold like five bobbins across. Cause you, if you're doing intarsia, you're, um, here, let me, you know what? Let's dress Martha and then I can point on her. It's easier. Yeah. Martha in her, in her, um, as if tea. Okay. So when you're doing intarsia in, for this, um, it's a, this is a bottom up knit so you knit up here with just one color i knit up to this up to the armhole in the round just like a normal sweater um and then when you start doing the mohair sections you create three balls of mohair and the mohair by the way is ito i talked about it in my last episode i do have a dab left and i think i've stuck it away but i'll, I'll put the info on screen um so I made three balls of mohair. So one ball for here, for this side, one ball for the center, and then one ball um, for the other side over here. And then I ended up making a second ball of the main color. So you're in, you have you have five balls. And actually, I think yarn shops and maybe some yarn notions people have um, these very handy little bobbin holders where you can wind the extra yarn on and those help keep the yarn straight instead of having balls that might roll all over the place so that that would help you if you if you ever find yourself doing intarsia um so anyway that that's a bit of a pain in the neck like juggling keeping all of those especially three three different strands of mohair coming into your knitted work but it's not for very many rows because again this is worsted weight or Aran weight um, i think the pattern's written for Aran. I did hand spun. I don't know what it came out to. Pro somewhere in there in that worsted Aaron. Um, I got gauge, um, no problem, with the on the same needle size. So I didn't change needle size. I mean, I think I'm, my gauge was a little bit... I had f a slightly fewer stitches. I tend to knit loose. So I had slightly fewer stitches than the pattern called for. And I just sized down. And that, that solved my problem um, of, with that. So I didn't have to go down a needle size, but anyway, yeah, after you, when you get up to here, then you're on one row. I mean, one, you just have one strand of mohair for the rest of the sweater. And then when you're doing the trim, obviously you're just using the worsted. So yeah, that's how that happened. I love this. It's so beautiful. It has a little bit of sparkle in it. I don't think you really could see it. Um, but the yarn has, let me see if you can see it here. Yeah. See it? See, see, there's a little bit of sparkle in there, uh, in the yarn. And there were there are these little wool nips that frankly get everywhere. And by by the time I was spinning the second bat, I, I was taking them out um, before I even got to the spin, just because th there were too many and there were like too many clusters and they're just all over my apartment. I still see some over there, even though I vacuumed probably three times since I worked with this. But yeah. I love the sweater though. I love it. Absolutely love it. And it was a really, really fun spin. I didn't do any sort of color management. I just let the green and pink lay where they, you know, go wherever they wanted. And I got this really lovely, um, you know, soft striping effect, which I, I really like. So anyway, you can keep looking at that while I talk to you about my other finished objects. Um, my second finished object, which also has my own hand spun in it, is the Achikochi by Eerie, E-R-Y. I'll put everything on screen so you can see the spelling. 
So yeah, completely done. I love this sweater. I, you know, so I didn't make any mods on this, did I? Oh, in the texture on top, yes, and I did short rows. So the pattern, you see how I have the short rows? The pattern didn't, um, doesn't call for short rows to raise the back neck, but I added those in, and be, and I where I added them was actually in the back underneath all the, the color work and everything, because you, you go literally right from casting on to doing this, this like woven textured stitch right here. It's beautiful, right? So I also realized that achikochi, I hope I'm saying it right, I may not be, it's a Japanese word, means this way, that way. So the idea of the pattern was that it was a bunch of arrows pointing this way and that way. And I did mess up somewhere in here, like somewhere, I think I have all three of these going the same direction and they were supposed to switch directions at some point. And they, yeah, I just, wasn't paying attention to the pattern and engrossed watching a film or something and I just didn't I didn't do that but I was gonna say um, I knew when I was knitting this that the spec was quite different from the spec that I am accustomed to knitting for myself and I I just decided to go with it especially like there was a big difference in the arm like I think you can see how big the cuff is like it's pretty big. It's pretty loose and big. But you know what? The overall effect is really cute and flattering. Like I really like it. Again, I'll pop a picture in here of me wearing it so you can see um, what it looks like. And I, I mean, I really should have it on. I just wanted to show you, um, I'll probably wear it next episode. I just wanted to show, show you close-ups and it's hard to show you close-ups when I'm wearing it. Um, but yeah, there you go. So I did modify some of the textured stitches too. There was, I think down here at the bottom of the yoke, I was meant to do a much longer, like an eight stitch or so textured um, pattern. And I didn't, I, I uh, opted to do a shorter, um, like six row or so, or four row, I can't remember. I'm, tr I'm trying to see if I can see how many stitches. I think it's uh, four rows of texture instead, just because I wanted to reduce the, distance I knew I was putting short rows in and I figured that would fill up the distance in the back and I didn't I didn't want it to be like have I didn't want to have an overly dropped um armhole like I didn't I knew the more I added the more drop down it would be in here so I just did not did not do that but man I love this this yarn is gorgeous let me tell you about the yarns the yarns I barely used I think I bought three skeins of this. I barely used my third skein, but I did tap into it. But this is the wool that I, I um, used for the main body. It's called Lammer Mirror Wool, grown in Scotland with love, number four. I think what they do, I think the number, no, it's four for four ply. Mm. After I finished the sweater, I posted it on Instagram and I tagged the makers, of course, and um, this farm, which is a farm in Scotland that has sheep, they she 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 posted that she was really happy. I loved the yarn, and she said it, it's too bad it was a one batch thing. I guess it, like for a micro farm, for a small farm, they take their their wool and have the mill spin it to whatever specs they give them, and then that's it. Like that's that's all there is. Like once it sells, it's there. You know, then it's next year's crop and whatever specs they determine to to um, have spun. It 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 is a I believe a natural, fairly natural. I do not think it's dyed. I think it's all the colors all created by natural colors. Um, the colorway is called Essie, and apparently you can't get it anymore. So if you wanted to knit with this, you'd have to look for someone destashing. I could be persuaded probably to par part with my almost full skein. Um, I do really love it. I do really love it. It blocked beautifully um, into the sweater. Like it, the uh, wool really bloomed in the in the soak and it softened and it's just oh, it's so comfortable. I've worn this like three times since I finished it about a week ago. <laughs> Um, the red is this gorgeous hand spun that I made from a bat that I got from Spin City UK. Um, it is called Punjabi and it has um, these really cool, it, it has a lot of black, a lot of red and fuchsia. And then little, little bits, you can see little dribs and drabs of green and blue in it. 
I've talked about both of these yarns because you've seen this in a, as a work in progress, but what I want to show you is the way that it knit up. Look at that, like with the pink and the black and red striping. It's really cool. I mean, this is the beauty of hand spun, right? That you get these this interesting variation um, in yarn. And I really, like, I didn't, because I bought spin cycle yarn before I had started spinning, I didn't quite get that spin cycle was seem to be taking their inspiration from hand spun yarn so because they the way that they spin their yarn kind of emul emulates the way that a hand spinner sp spins like the the outcome of when a hand spinner spins so um but yeah highly recommend this pattern um, if you're interested in exactly what i did for the back uh neck to be risen to be um, brought up i had a couple people message me while i was knitting it um, asking me exactly what I did. So I, I, when I mod, I am making notes for myself as much as, you know, and if they help other people, awesome. Like these women were asking me what I did and how I liked it. But at that point, I wasn't far enough along to tell them how I liked it. But I just said, you could see what I did um, in my notes. But I, I don't, I can't, I couldn't have told them then what I could tell them now that let, it worked and it's great. It did exactly what I wanted it to. Oh, and I, if you're following along and this is in your, you're one of my returning viewers and you've been following along with me, um, you know, having anxiety over the neck, the neck works fine. Um, it did block out flat. I had to do a little bit of um, pinning and stuff around the neckline, which I think there's also an image in my, on my project page. Um, that you can look at if you're if you're going to uh, knit this pattern as well. I think the nice thing about this pattern is that though in the yoke you don't get a lot of coverage of color, you get an opportunity to really knit your contrast color and show it off in big big amounts um, in this bottom trim situation here. So um, you know, if you have if you have something that's a special skein that you want to showcase more than just having little flex show, this this could be the sweater for you. Um, I will say too that this stitch that you do right above the cuffs and right above the waist, it's a woven stitch, so you um, you're carrying yarn both in front and in back when you're knitting it, and it is it it doesn't have a lot of give, so do make sure you do it short or or. Um, it's not short loose <laughs> make sure you do it loose uh, if you do go ahead and and do that extra stitch um, I in hindsight I maybe would have done the knit in version instead of that just because I think that would have given me a little more ease um, than this did and I also think it might have been a little more um, defining than this is and plus you don't really want loose <laughs> stitches on your cuff because if you're reaching for things it's more likely that things will get caught up in it um in this particular case i think the shetland wool the lamamir really kind of came around it and is like holding it nice and snug down so i, I i'm having experienced that but i would imagine that if you were knitting maybe with a super wash or something you might that might be a problem that you have yeah second third third fo third fo i also knit from my cashmere custom slogan hat kit that I bought from Clinton Hill Cashmere, I knit my logo. So it says whiskey and wool. This, I love this hat, it is so warm. Let me see if I can put it on without messing my hair up too much. I don't think I can mess my hair up too much. There you go, that's my hat. I love it. It's so snuggly warm. It fits my head well. I was a little nervous about it not fitting um, because I'm kind of on the small head side <laughs> and hat patterns can tend to be a little loose and then they fall down in my eyes if they have any sort of um, extra ease and stuff. But what I did for this hat was I knit the rib using a smaller needle because she has you knit the whole thing in one needle size. So I knit the rib in a smaller needle and then I switched to the bigger needle once I was done with the ribbing. And that really helped. I mean, I even did the cast on with the smaller needle. 
I did make a second one. So the yarn is enough to make two, actually, if you're okay making the reverse colors. So I made a black one with white letters, same exact logo, but I shipped it off to one of my sons because I thought he would really love it. So I went ahead and sent it to him. Um, but I can put a picture in here of the hat. I've asked him to send me a picture, but I don't know if I'm going to get it before I, I post this on the web. So yeah, so this is my fourth finished object. Um, and finally, I finished a skein of yarn this week, which I'm going to show you later when I get to the spinning content for this episode. All right, so let me stick with the knitting. I'm going to, um, let me talk, let me talk about some design work that I'm doing. Okay, so I have the Saucy Bomber jacket. I decided to, I have some testers testing it, which is nice. I'm really happy that people wanted to test it. What I don't have are big size testers. I, I could use some, there's the final three sizes. I don't have anybody testing those sizes. So if anyone is interested, you can have, you know, as much time as you need. I'm not, I, I don't have any hard deadlines. The deadlines can be soft deadlines. Um, so um, if you're interested in making the bomber jacket and you're um, one of the last three sizes, I, I could use you, could use you, you could get the pattern for free. Um, okay. Got like a stack of stuff going on over here. So anyway, I am, one of my whips is a second version. I decided to go ahead and make a second version for myself to knit, knit along with my testers as well as um, have a maybe a more film friendly color for some of the tutorials. So I'm probably gonna refilm, even though some of the tutorials I think are fine. Actually, I think they're all fine. I'm probably gonna refilm all of them using this color and then maybe and then see what what's the best footage um, on each of them, so especially like the zipper footage. I didn't do. I think I could do a little bit better job. Like I think the camera's a little far away. Like things like that, little minor things like that that I think I can do better. So um, and I think it'll. I'll have. A, I'll get a better picture with the this very soft color. So second Surrey, saucy Surrey bomber jacket knit in I just uh, have just joined the body I literally am joining the body actually in this row I haven't quite finished it so my needles are in the back um, so I'm joining the front and back to knit in the round so I would say the body is about a third of the way done maybe a little bit more yeah a little bit more because it's at nine inches and then I have to knit another 12 or so so almost half done the yarn is this, it's, I have it over here, is again, I'm knitting with Ching Fiber Melted Baby Surrey. This is yarn I bought at um, Vogue. I bought it at Vogue. And yeah, so this is the colorway Oyster. Again, her labels are hard to read, especially for old eyes like mine. Uh, colorway is Oyster. Um, I bought four skeins the pattern used for my size uses three and a half skeins and my trim i'm so excited about this this is going to be my trim color so you see how see how that's going to look so there are in this beautiful oyster there are lime green speckles yellow speckles teal blue and plum which i think you can see pretty clearly <laughs> wait let's do it this way there you go. Um, so I decided I pulled out of my stash this. This I actually bought at Vogue two years ago in, in January 2018. Um, this beautiful sock yarn, which is from Fuse Fiber Company. She was she was there in 2018 for the very first time, and then she left, or she wasn't there in 2019, and then was back for 2020. Um, this is her. This is the color is called Twilight. I don't know if she still makes it or not. Again, I bought it. Um, it's a it's a uh, merino cashmere nylon. So MCN is the is the acronym for the blend. Um, so yeah, I don't know if she still makes this color or not. It just you know it happened to just be perfect for this, and I'm thrilled <laughs> thrilled to be using sash yarn and not ha and not be in a position where I need to buy more. So I will keep you posted on that. That will most likely be a finished object by the next time I film. Um, I went zipper hunting yesterday for the for this version, for the Oyster version, and I had trouble finding a, um, a zipper that would match and was the right size. 
So I went on Amazon and I found a few. Um, I ordered three different zippers. I, in my pattern notes, I suggest that you don't use a metal zipper. Instead that you use a plastic one because I'm concerned that a metal zipper might um, create too much weight on the front here. Um, but two of the zippers I ordered are metal. It was I was really looking for color. I don't want to do a high contrast plum one, which I don't even know if I could find this color plum. I could definitely find plum, but probably not this. This is a blue plum not versus a red plum. Um, so I, I don't think I could find it. I was really looking for something that would match the base color, this like dusty pink or mauve, I guess, might be another way. I was looking for something that would match those colors. And uh, yeah, so I have bought one that I think is gonna be pastel pink and then two that look promising, but they both have metal teeth. So I will let you know, I may be setting a metal teeth zipper in and maybe it's gonna be okay. I mean, I was, pleasantly surprised at, at how um, how this really stood up, this plastic uh, zipper, the weight of the plastic zipper actually, you know, the fabric could could deal with it. Like the fabric didn't have any trouble, isn't having any trouble um, holding it. It's not creating any problems in the way that the sweater hangs or fits or anything. So maybe metal, maybe like brass teeth will be fine. I don't know. I'll let you know. I will let you know. We'll talk about it again for sure. Oh, another stash acquisition. This, I bought this beautiful bag by um, O, splash bag they call it, by O oh Wow Amsterdam. Um, and Stephen and Penelope posted that they got a bunch of them in and were selling them. So I figured, what the heck, let me look. They're not expensive, but you have to pay a lot for shipping. So, um, I was, uh, I just decided for a one-off, it's fine. But I love the hot pink, the hot pink um, drawstring and the pink and purple and, and pops of um, neon orange in there on it. It's just a simple canvas bag. It's not lined or anything. Um, just, you know, plain, plain bag. Um, but it's functional. I actually think it would be really, if you're a sock knitter, this would probably be pretty awesome for socks, like to you know to carry around your socks because it would be plenty of room for your main color and maybe a, a heel and toe color and then your socks too. And it closes up pretty, pretty snugly. Um, so it, I think it could be good. This sweater will outgrow it probably by the time I get to the sleeves, but um, for now, it's good, it, it works. I love it. I love how colorful and fun these splash bags are. Um, and I, I don't know if they have any left or not. I bought this about a week ago. So, but yeah, happy with that. I cast on so many things, you know, I was really, it's funny, you know, after I finished the, this sweater and the Achikochi, I worked on the hats. I got those done in no time. Those are like an evening, a couple hours, a, co a few, a few episodes of Sabrina and sex education, and I was done. <laughs> I was just done um, knitting them. So they got blocked and took like over a day to dry. But the, she suggests steam blocking it. But I really like the way my stuff looks when I wet block. Um, so anyway, I spent a lot of time contemplating the list I had made for my stash down. 2020 and trying to figure out what did I want to make next because I have a list of I think it's around 15 projects um, I finished finished one though um, and I can't remember I well whatever I'll catch you up on that like around the middle of the year I'll let you know how I'm doing or I'll check back in with you on how I'm doing maybe we'll do it every quarter so I'll check in with you in April about how I'm doing on that on that list. Um, so I was trying to figure out what did I want to make next and what was I feeling, what it was, what was my feeling about knitting? What did I want to knit next? And so I, I've had my, some hand spun, more hand spun sitting by my ball winder for probably since before Thanksgiving. And, um, the yarn that I needed to cake was this yarn here, this beautiful, this was my hat first, very first 
hand spun project. So after I ruined a bat <laughs> learning how to spin, um, I had ordered a, a, like 12 ounces, I think. I want to say it was 12 ounces of fiber from a local place, like a place in PA, not too far from me. Um, and I thought it would be, I was thinking to myself, sweater quantity, but um, after I spun it, I realized that it's a lot more sparkly than what I wanted. Like it's a nice, beautiful, pale bluish gray. Um, the fiber itself had a lot of like sky blue color in it, along with natural gray and then the sparkle, uh, Angelina or Stelina, probably Angelina in it. And um, when I, I didn't know anything about spinning when I was spinning this, I was just learning. When I spun it, the blue, it, it created this like very pale pale blue grade blue heather so when you look at it close up i don't let me see if you can see it when you look at it close up you can see the yeah yeah there you go i think you can see that there's a little bit of heather in there like between the gray and the blue you can certainly see all the sparkle it's really high sparkle but um, after I made a couple skeins of it, I I realized that it would actually make a really pretty throw. Like it's along the lines of the color scheme that I have going on in my apartment. I have a lot of um, a lot of white and natural wood and some soft gray colors, and then just pops of color. So I thought, well, this will be a very pretty throw, maybe on my bed or on my couch. And um, around the time that I decided I was gonna that I was, I thought I would be ready to make a throw. It was probably just ahead of my holiday knit. I had taken the bag, it was seven skeins of hand spun. I had taken the bag out over to um, my, out, out into the room where I have the ball winder and sat them down and they stayed there until last week when I finally wound them um, and cast on this gorgeous blanket. So, what I did, I, I don't really do a, any particular pattern. Um, what I do with my um, blanket knits, my throws, this is the fourth one I've made. Um, I tend to just cast on a rib stitch. So I cast on anywhere from 70 to 100 stitches, I think is the most. And I knit with a really fat needle. I think this is a 25 millimeter or a US size 15. I think I got the millimeters right. If I didn't, I will pop it on screen. Um, this particular one, and then I'm holding two strands together. And what I could have done, I realized, was run the yarn back through my spinning wheel to ply it one more time, like to, to put two strands together. But I didn't really want to deal with that. And I didn't want to deal with the differences in yardages on the skeins. So I decided I would just go ahead and knit because what happened when I was spinning, because I was learning, I had some that were very fat. Let me see if I can show you. So like you see, and I, had, I wasn't plying quite right. So you see how loose that is? Um, there is a second ply in there, very thin ply. Um, so I had done some very loose, loose spin because I was learning loose spins, loose plying. And as I progressed through the fiber, I was also practicing with different fiber. So it took me a while. It took me a few months, no weeks, maybe a month or two to finish the whole entire 12 ounces. It's also quite boring because it's not a very fun, um, once you, see what's happening with the fiber. It's sort of boring to watch after that. So um, it, I did it after I got through, I think, one bag. I um, went through the second bag in a, like in smaller increments and slower, like just working on one and then switching that in and spinning something else that was more, more fun. <laughs> um, and I, you know, I then... I, at the end, what happened, what I saw was that I had these very fat, plump skeins where the yarn was probably worsted or maybe air and weight, and then going all the way down to probably a pretty healthy DK by the time I got to my last skein, just because I was getting better at spinning. Um, so my plan in knitting this blanket is to um, put together a strand that is, you know, a little chubby with a skinny one, though I think right now, these are pretty similar. 
I think you can see they're not like this top one is probably this is better spun I can tell that the twist is better on it than the twist is here like I just got bet I got better at plying and stuff it was it's fun to look at because I see my progress and I also I in my early skeins I have some roping and stuff happening where I over twisted so um, that's certainly fun to watch um, and I, I think it's going to be an awesome blanket. Like, I think when I get it to the soak and get it blocked, it's just going to, it's really going to just become a, a really cozy, comfy blanket um, to, you know, to have either, to have a throw, like throw on my couch or throw on my, on my bed. Um, I had said that I'm getting a new couch. I think I talked about when I talked about doing this. I, my new couch was supposed to be here this weekend and, um, I got a delayed notice, of course, so I have another month before it's coming. Um, and I thought that, you know, maybe I'd get the throw done by the time I got here. I actually think this blanket probably won't go on the couch. I think it's going to go on the bed. I have, I'm probably going to put this blanket actually on the couch, this blue blanket here. I use it. It's a Pendleton um, throw, just a throw. Um, I use this on my bed sometimes when I have a little bit of a cold night, um, but... I think I think I'm gonna end up. I think a splash of color is going to be necessary once I get the couch in here, um, and rather than a neutral, another neutral, because the couch is neutral, the rug is neutral, the ottoman's neutral. It's there's a lot of neutral going on over there, and I think the couch will need a little pop. Ah, <sighs> decorating problems, right? Um, yeah. So that was the next thing I cast on, and I'm I've just been working on it now and then. It's very mindless knitting very fast knitting um i'm probably you saw it was about that big um about 12 or maybe maybe in that 14 inch 12 to 14 inches or so i think i'm about a third of the way through the yarn so i will probably it'll probably get to 40 to 50 i mean i think i'll get pretty close to 50 inches um in the length it's it's knit though so i could easily and rib rib is so stretchy it's definitely wide enough i'm actually thinking i probably should have cast on fewer stitches so it was longer and and not as wide um but i i'm whatever it's fine what i actually may do i've thought about it is i may when i get to the end it's not long enough i might just knit this in maybe have a little green stripe at the end or you know i'll look at what other hand spun this is pro this is the wrong color family but if it's in the blue and green I mean I, I think I have some here I don't know if you can see it behind Martha oh yeah you can see it that green right there maybe I'll knit that in too I don't know I'll just have to see um because that whatever it's a hand knit so if it's a little unique and it's asymmetrical and it's patterning I think that's fine so um I'm 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 excited to see what happens and just sort of let the process lead me with that um, knit. So anyway, I cast that on, but it what it didn't quite satisfy my cast on cravings. I still really wanted to cast on a sweater. Oh my gosh. And I forgot something else that I've been working on and I will show you. So, um, I, I it actually, it's time for it now. So I'm going to go get it. Be right. I forgot to tell you, this is a fat squirrel bag that I have my, um, my blanket in. This is the biggest bag I own, and it's actually perfect for this blanket project. Um, maybe when I get this blanket done, I'll start my scrappy blanket because I will certainly have a project bag um, ready for it. Um, okay, and my other fat squirrel bag that I, I bought in an update not too long ago. It's hard to get her bag, so if you're a fan, you really need to stalk her, I guess. Anyway, so I couldn't figure out what to do, so I pulled out this oldie, but goodie, and worked. I've been working on this, so I did finally make some progress. I had I looked at my prog. Um, this is like a cloud by Hohi Locatelli. Um, I last time you saw it, I had just joined the body in the round, and um, hadn't knit much. So now I've actually knit quite a bit. I am about see my progress keeper. This is about, I had to do that because I, I kept measuring and measuring and I was like knitting a few rows and it would be another quarter inch and then I would knit a few more rows and it's another quarter inch. So I just decided to put a progress marker in, um, a uh, stitch marker in rather, just to 
so that when I looked at the body, I wasn't like, did I, did I knit more? Um, I could actually see it, like visually see it. So I've been working on this um, baby once in, well, now and then. The yarn is gorgeous. I absolutely love the yarn. I've never seen um, a purple yarn that uh, encompasses both the red side of purple, which is here, and the blue side of purple, which is here. And this yarn does that beautifully. Um, this is... It drives me crazy when people go on and on about yarn and don't tell you what it is. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you what it is. This is the Little Gray Sheep. And the yarn is, is it Jacob or Gotland? I don't remember exactly what it is. I've had it a while. I know the color name is the color, the Tangled Web We Weave. Um, and I think it's got a natural gray color, but I think it's Gotland but I might be wrong. Um, I bought it, this yarn, two years ago, I think. And um, I cast, as I said, I cast this sweater on in May. And then what happened was it got hot here, like the climate got hotter here. And this became this hairy yarn, this fuzzy yarn, was not fun to knit in, in the hot, humid summer that we were having. So I put this down to pick it up again in the fall. And I picked it up and worked on it a little bit here and there in the fall, but it didn't really catch my attention. And I gotta be honest, like it's still not really catching my attention. I really love the yarn, the pattern, this textured stitch, it's an eight, eight row repeat. And it's mindless, it's relatively mindless, but it's, it's boring. It's a boring stitch and it takes me practically the entire repeat to make one inch. And it's tiny needles, it's size three needles, US size three needles, or, or is that 3.25 millimeter? Yeah, this is a slog. I'm trying though. I, I'm really like, this is at the front of my head right now. I'm really trying to get through this. So I'm making myself do some a few rows here and there. And this has become my travel knit. So it goes with me to work. I, you know, if I have time in a meeting, I'll work on it. Um, it's going, it travels with me when I'm going, you know, other places where I might have some time to knit. Because uh, I do want to get it done. And, oh my goodness, I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, wow, I'll be lucky I finish this by the end of March. I hope to make it before its anniversary cast on date. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Oh my goodness. But yeah, so I was working on this, working on the blanket but still craving something else. And I had, I knew I needed to start the um, second Saucy Surrey as well, but I wasn't, why didn't I do it? Oh, I was getting the pattern ready to, um, I didn't want to cast it on until I was getting the pattern to send out to testers. So I was spending a few days doing that, uh, writing the pattern and um, getting it ready for so that testers could start working on it. And, um, in the meantime, I still had some knitting time and that those two projects weren't cutting it for me. So I went ahead and cast on this, the Stone Crop cardigan by Andrea Mowry, which I have had the yarn caked and ready to go for a while since before the holidays. I just didn't cast it on. So I went ahead and did my cast on. So this cardigan is, um, you can see the steaks right there, is it's a planned steak. Um, I am not too far. This, I can see this is gonna take a long time. It's fun to knit though, I am enjoying it. I love a good color work and um, the bobbles, I, I, I grew, I was a child in the 70s, so bobbled sweaters, bleh. Not really into bobbled sweaters. Sorry, everyone who wasn't a child of the 70s and doesn't remember having awful dangly bobbles off your person when you were seven. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, apologies to you all, because some of you, I know people love them, but I'm really not into them. So I was a little nervous about the bobbles, but when I saw Katie Jacks, I saw Jackie of, of Katie Jack and at Rhinebeck, uh, Katie Jack Knits, which is a YouTube channel. When I saw her at Rhinebeck, um, she talked about 
not doing the bobbles as big as Andrea Mowry had done. And I so that intrigued me. I was like, oh, so you can make smaller ones. That's cool. I like that idea. Um, and I, I um, did a little research and I found what I think is a smaller bobble. I don't know because I didn't do a side-by-side -side comparison. But I think I, I managed to make a smaller bobble. And um, yeah, I, I like it. I like it. I think this is clever the way these bobbles are done because if you see, and let me get away from the needles. If you see it, it up close, there's like a, um, a mini cable stitch that goes around it, which is, you know, it's pretty clever. It doesn't make it look like the things that I remember from my childhood. <laughs> so um, yeah, so these are palatable. But wow, this this sweater, I mean, it's got stuff going on all the way down it, <laughs> all the way down. Um, and by the way, I haven't forgotten that I didn't say a word about what I'm wearing, so I will get to that. I will, I will finish my whole knitting segment with telling you about this. Um, yeah, so this will be a slow knit. Uh, and I'm in that part, that yoke part, where you're just increasing, you're like making the most number of stitches in the round that you make in the whole sweater because after you split for the sleeves, everything goes in, you know, now you're just doing your torso. So that this distance to go all, you know, around across your armhole and stuff and around your chest and back is the biggest, it's the most. Like, so I'm in that moment, in that phase where I'm just increasing, increasing, increasing. <laughs> so it's really slow, really slow, but I love it. I love it. Yet I love it. So it's, this is nice. This is a really nice knit for when I need, I want something that, you know, requires a little more brain activity. So maybe not so brainless knit, which I, I mean, I, I seem to always have something that's color work on the needles. Um, so yeah. All right. Without, without delay, let me tell you about the yarn. The green yarn, this lovely, beautiful teal, is by Uchichita, Uchitita, Uchitita. And this is called, this yarn is called the Minimalist. It's part of her Minimalist um, yarn collection. The, uh, the color name, maybe, I think she's a Netherlands dyer, and that name, the name of the color doesn't mean anything to me, but it might mean something in a different language. It is called it's very hard to read. Freebad? Freebad? It looks actually easier to read on screen than it does in person. Anyway, this is a non-superwash wool. It's 100% Highland wool, musling free, non-superwash, um, made in the Netherlands. And, uh, but Highland wool, is that the sheep? I, or is it because it's from the Highlands? I'm not really sure. I didn't ask. But it's beautiful and it's great for seeking. And then I am following the pattern instructions, which is to use spin cycle dyed in the wool. Um, I am using the colorway stay out of the forest. Um, and this is, uh, this is the spin cycle label. There you go. This is actually not the, the um, band, ball band for this ball. So I am using stay out of the forest. I think you need a total of two skeins. And I think what I figured out was I have, like once I finish this ball, um, and you can see it'll finish with this orange color, I'm going to use up the rest of this, which will bring back in some of that blue and green. This is the rest of Truth Bomb. I've already used this in two sweaters, so this is going into a third. And then I have a second ball of, um, that's a little messy, a second ball of Truth Bomb that I will use somewhat um, inside there, which you're not really seeing as a yellow orange. So I'll go, you know, I'll, I'll use a bit of it. I won't use a lot. I don't think. Um, but I, I think the majority of the color work will be these two. So I just decided to start with the stay out of the forest. And I think, I think everything else should make sense. I mean, when I was at Vogue, so there, I had a hard time. Like I decided, I made this decision to do this, the colors this way because it, I had it, but also because I couldn't get another skein of Stay Out of the Forest anywhere when I was planning to, um, when I was planning this sweater and I knew what I wanted, to, what yarn I needed. I could not find a second skein of Stay Out of the Forest. All the suppliers were sold out. And so I was facing waiting to cast on or make another plan. So I made another plan. Um, but while I was at Vogue, 
I saw some. I saw Stay Out of the Forest. I saw some Spin Cycle yarn. Both Starlight Knitting Society had it as well as Argyle? No. Uh, um, Magpie Fibers had a bunch of it. It sells like hotcakes, man. There, the people, the crowds around the um, the spin cycle yarns. It, it, I mean, I saw it. I was able to get close. I was able to look at it. But I gotta tell you, like the color, because it's been two years since I bought mine, the colors didn't look exactly the same. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna do just as well with what I have because the, I can see them and I know that they're gonna blend together. They're like they'll blend well enough. And in the knit, no one's gonna, no one's gonna know. Uh, well, the women that own the company will know <laughs> that own Spin Cycle. They'll, they'll understand what I did, I think. Um, okay. Yeah. So I cast on my stone crop, Cardi. It will be on the needles for a while. I have a feeling, which is fine. I have other things I need to do. Mainly this. So this sweater, this is um, a sweater of my own design. It is, I've just been calling it a layering tee. And I decided after I named um, the Saucy Surrey, I was like, you know, Saucy kind of has, it has a few different meanings, but one of the meanings can be that, you know, you're feeling a buzz from alcohol. And I was like, well, I am whiskey and wool, so maybe I should kind of stick along like whiskey themed names. So I decided to call this the Rye Layering Tee, R-Y-E Layering Tee. And I, um, I also, I've had people contact me and tell me that they're interested in testing and thank you so much. I deeply appreciate your interest and please remember <laughs> that you're interested because I'm going to be releasing the pattern pretty soon um, for testers, two testers. So if you are interested and you wanna circle back around and get in touch with me, um, I do have, I, there will be at least seven sizes of a pretty broad range. Um, what I have done with this so far this pattern is I have I have written my draft my I've taken my my very rough notes um, on the pattern on how to knit it and I've now written them into a pattern what I haven't done is I have not yet graded it so I've got the um, ear markers in there to grade it yeah I actually have eight sizes um, from size 32 to 64, up to 64. You're meant to wear it with a little bit of negative ease um, because it's a rib stitch. So um, there's built-in ease in there. It's very, I mean, this is very stretchy, very stretchy. So you, I mean, I'm wearing a size 40 and I have a 39 inch bust. So, and it, it, I mean, you could see there's some, there's places in it that where there's ease. Anyway, the pattern is written uh, I need to grade it, but there's a point in the pattern where I know when I knit this, I cut the yarn and moved it so that I can move where the beginning of row is. And so I, and I realized in hindsight that I didn't have to do that. So I, I want to knit through to the point where I moved it was when I joined the, joined the body in the round. I split for sleeves and joined the body in the rounds. Well, I didn't split for sleeves cause you're not doing a yoke. This is top down, but you're, 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 um, forming the shoulders and the neck um but nevertheless there's a there's a point in there where I think I made a mistake and I wasn't sure how to write that part of the pattern so I really want to cast one of these on and get it to that get to that point so I could see what I did and make sure that the instructions are right so I'm waiting to do that before I grade the pattern um but uh, nevertheless, it is. It should be ready. Like this will be ready for testing within the next week or two. Like I should have time to get that part knitted. Um, and I think what I'll do with this too, because it's my own design, I may do a finished object video for it as well, just to talk people through the options and what I've done. Um, the pattern will be written for choose your own adventure. So you're, you will have options in terms of what rib stitch you want to knit or even if you wanted stockinette um, or some other textured stitch. Um, you could do a Henley placket or you could just do a plain crew neck. You can choose to add tipping like I did or not. Um, you can choose any sleeve length. So you could do a full length sleeve like I did or you could do a, a bracelet, elbow, short sleeve, whatever you like. Um, that will is easy to do. 
Um, and you can also add one of the versions I'm making will have color blocking in it, some um, bands of color. That I think that's the next one I'm making. So you can also choose to do that, and I'll have instructions on how to do that if you want. The, the pattern will be written so that you insert your own rib stitch all the way through, and then at the end there'll be um, rib stitches that I've used, or if my testers want to share what they've done, I'll add, include those as well. And also I'll include notes on color placement for the um, the, the color blocking that I'm going to be doing. Because so I'm, I'm knitting, my next version will be knit out of two colors, a solid, a semi-solid, and a um, variegated color that go together. Um, so, so yeah, that's the plan. Um, it is sport weight, or I would say this one is a heavyweight fingering slash almost sport weight. Um, it's knit on size five needles, the whole thing. Yeah, I don't know what else you need to know, but yeah, that's that's what I'm wearing, the rye layering tee. Um, which is one of my own designs. All right, how are we doing here on time? Wow, long, I'm sorry, long, this is long. I had a lot to talk to you about because last time I didn't talk to you about this stuff. Um, all right, I'm gonna quickly tell you about spinning. I, oh, okay, before I show you this, I did kind of show this in the intro. If you're Jackie, this is your skein. So if you wanna be surprised, I'm gonna put a jump to right now on screen of where you should jump to. Um, and, and Jackie should know who she is because I'm doing a skill swap with her. She is um, getting a, this skein of hand spun, which I'm about to show you, and in exchange, I am getting socks knitted by her. Um, so, yeah, I made, I made yarn. I made yarn this week. So here you go, here it is. I'm so pleased with this. This is, uh, I think this is gonna be a really cool natural gradient. Like like not, it's gonna stripe a, a bit. I, well, it depends on what she does, but I think she would get something like this, only it's gonna be these shades of coral um, mixed in with these neutral, shots of neutral color. And there is some nice pretty gold in there too. Um, so what this was, was Witchcrafty Lady, I bought, she's a UK dyer, fiber dyer, I think she dyes yarn too, um, I bought from her some Superwash Pullworth and Silk Blend, so this is a 80-20, 80% Superwash Pullworth, 20% Silk, um, it was a 100 gram bat, or sorry, it was actually a braid, I'm going to put a picture of what, the, I bought two from her. I'm gonna put a picture of what they were, they looked like here, on here, on screen, so you can see. Um, this braid, when I unbraided it, I laid it out like in kind of a back and forth, like this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to about the second braid so you'll understand what I mean. But anyway, I laid it out so I could see how the colors were, and there wasn't really any pattern per se. Like I was looking to maybe color manage, and I decided not to color manage, actually. I decided to just, split the braid by weight so I could do a two ply. So I split the braid, weighed them to make sure they were the same, and then I spun them, and then I plied them. And this is what I got, and I'm, I'm really, really pleased with it. I mean, you'll see from the picture, you have will have seen from the picture that there were a lot of really keyed up bright orange and bright pink splotches on this skein, as well as yellow. And uh, yeah, it just spun beautifully. Like that, those thick braids, Okay, let me show you the second one now, because this is what I'm gonna spin next. Um, this is the second braid, also uh, Witchcrafty Lady. And um, this one, I bought the two together, and I don't know if they were one of a kind, I don't recall, I bought them a while ago. I bought them like in the fall, early fall, like September or so, before Rhinebeck. Um, and this was a braid, I embraided it, and then, and then I separated the, the um, fiber. Um, this braid had a lot more blue in it and green and less and no, well, very little pink. There's some pink in there. Um, and this one I also laid out in the same way, like a snake to kind of see if there was any rhyme or reason or any like rhythm to the way she put color on the, on the braid. Um, it's combed top is what it is. So it's like, you know, you can go right to your spinning wheel and start spinning this with this combed top. You just start pulling off the end and and go. 
Um, what happens when you do that though, is that these really deep dark colors, they get blended with the white bits that are in there and the other colors as they're coming up, like you'll start pulling in other colors and you get kind of a pretty gradient, which is what you're seeing happening here, right? Where you get the really nice sort of um, blended part. So like a section that's blue, this that's this long and blue will become this like really long section of blue. Um, so this this fiber because it's such it's long ply like I think Polworth is a is you know for wool is pretty long ply um, like a long sorry long fiber staple like the staple of the fibers fairly long and then it's mixed with silk which is ridiculously long um, it it doesn't come apart very easily like so as you're drafting you end up doing a longer draft like if I was working with alpaca which is that big I would be doing a really short you know tug 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 with the fiber but this because it's longer I can do this like my arm movements bigger right because I have to pull till it starts to separate the fibers start to pull out and separate um, but that just ends up creating bigger, longer sections of color. Um, so with, uh, with, with Jackie's skein, I, um, I just kind of went with whatever came out. I didn't try to color manage. Everything was pretty monochromatic in terms of it was all these warm tones of yellow, orange, pink. Um, there was pops of purple in the fiber like splotches, like pretty big splotches of purple that blended with the yellow, the warmer tones and became kind of this murky brown color, which works beautifully with the other colors. So that was, that was something that I was looking for that I wanted to have happen. And there was also some bits of green, which I think you can see them here and there in the skein. You can see them right there. There's a little bit of green and you can see some barber pulling happening there. Um, so yeah, that was, that was a really interesting, fun spin. And there was, there were moments where I, when I was spinning it, where I was like, oh my goodness, I don't know if she's going to like this because it's so bright. Um, but when it, once I applied it, the colors kind of blended, your eye blends those colors once you apply them. So you kind of, you, you know, you, you've got to get close to really see those Yeah. So with this one, so that one, I just took the braid the um, fiber and yanked in half and then just spun the big fat thing. With this one, what I did after I laid it out and looked at it for a little while, I realized that this is probably going to make a rainbow <laughs> because I'm going to go from blue to pink or red, like this hot red, and then from there to a gold and yellow, and then from there to a um, kind of a neutral with green and then from there back into these colors again and I thought wow that's probably gonna make a rainbow I think I want to maintain that um, that aspect of it so I split the the comb top in half long ways so I have what I have here is one half and the other half is here in the bag um, and I will be spinning them um, so basically it's going to be like an end to end ply situation. So I'll be spinning end to end and then the second piece end to end and then they'll be plied together. So those colors should match up in the skein. Not perfectly, of course, which I don't want it to be perfect anyway. It's more, it's, I think it looks cooler when there's more blending happening. Um, so it should end up being a really kind of interesting gradient, I think, I think. I'm excited about this. I almost started spinning this last night, but I decided to wait um, a little bit longer. So yeah, that is my spin project. I still have, um, these are these are destined to be a rye layering tee. Um, I have prepped the fiber too for um, the second half. I have half the yarn spun for the t layering tee um, in this beautiful red heather from Countess of Blaze, like this red. It was these were together, and what I did, they were together in comb top. What I did was I separated out the the blue as much as I could, the light blue, this baby, this soft baby blue. I separated it out from the red, and I there's a also a pale sort of pea soup green in there that I just let that green go wherever it wanted to go. 
Um, so yeah, I have, these are ready for me to spin as well. So what'll happen is a bobbin of blue, a bobbin of red, they get plied together and we create this. We create this, this type of um, red to blue heather um, that knits up like this. And that's gonna be one of these um, when it's done. So this will this will be the third one that I'll make because the next one I'm gonna make is uh, is out of some um, yarn that I've caked and ready to go, which I, I'll be I'll have a I'll have a bit of it to show you next time. Um, so yeah, that is my other spinning that's happening. I have one more thing to show you, and then I'm done. Um, I got my last club color from Ulan Textile. So this is some luxury, this is her luxury fiber club. Uh, and this is Falkland Merino Camel and Glitter. It's 125 gram braid. It's just beautiful. She must've had Christmas on her mind because <laughs> it's sort of Christmassy and holiday-ish, those really rich, rich colors. Uh, it has a lot of black in it, which I assume is one of those natural fibers that is listed there. So um, curious to see how that will end up spinning. But I don't have plans to spin it anytime soon. Because that, as you can see, I've got some other spins, um, <coughs> some other spinning planned. So um, yeah, that is my show for today. That is my episode. And um, I thank you so much for staying, sticking it through here. And uh, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And I look forward to sharing more with you next time. So please have a wonderful rest of your weekend and a wonderful next two weeks. And I will see you soon. Bye.